Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be all about bunny ear infections. A few weeks back, Blueberry had an ear infection and I wanted to make this video to go over the signs and symptoms that we noticed which made us believe she had an ear infection, what our vet recommended and which medicine she was on to make her feel better, and what we are doing now to prevent any future ear infections as they can be quite common in Hall and Lop breeds due to their floppy ears. One of the first things that we noticed was that Blueberry was cleaning her ears more than often. Rabbits are very clean animals and do a great job at grooming themselves, but we noticed she was over grooming her ears. This was a sign that she was in pain, and you could tell that her ears were bothering her because she was constantly pulling and licking at them. The second symptom that I noticed was that she was shaking her head. She would shake her head and then scratch at her ears. It is normal for your rabbit to groom their ears and shake their head, but if you notice they are doing it more than often, you should monitor them for any other symptoms. Blueberry was doing this multiple times a day, and the head shaking combined with her constantly grooming her ears concerned me because I could see that she was uncomfortable and bothered by her ears. Rabbits are prey animals, which means they hide their pain very well. They do not normally show any signs or symptoms of being in pain till they are very sick. As a rabbit owner, you need to be aware of your rabbit's daily activities and monitor them for any abnormal behavior. One thing that was different from her normal behavior was that she was hiding inside her woodhouse more and did not want to socialize as much. She's normally a very friendly bunny, so we did find this odd. This video clip here was taken before she was sick, and as you can see, she loves to have her ears rubbed. However, when she was sick, she did not want to be pet near her ears at all, which was another symptom which led me to believe she had an ear infection, as touching her ears bothered her. Another thing that was off about her normal behavior was that she wasn't eating as much. She wasn't as excited to eat and would take longer to finish her pellets. It seemed like eating would make her tired and she would lay next to her snuffle mat and then scratch her ears. This could be because chewing the hard pellets was hurting her ears. The only thing that confused me was that in the evening she would still do her nightly bunny bedtime binkies, which is typical blueberry behavior. It was weird because she was acting in pain during the day, but then at night would still show me she was happy and flopped on the bed. This is why it's important to still take your rabbit to the vet if you notice any symptoms that are unusual and you are unsure, because they hide their pain very well, and if we had waited to take her to the vet any longer, it could have gotten worse and resulted in a more severe ear infection. In my opinion, it is always better to be safe than sorry, and if you take your bunny to the vet and they tell you they are healthy, that's great news. But if they find something is wrong, it's always better to act sooner than later with rabbits, as they can go downhill so quickly. Those were the symptoms Blueberry presented when she had an ear infection, but there can be other symptoms to look out for. One of the most common ear infection symptoms is a head tilt. Luckily, Blueberry never developed one, but I wanted to still show you what you should look out for. Thank you to our friend Jack and Ruby the bunnies for showing us what you may see if your rabbit develops a head tilt. With proper treatment and medication from a vet, your bunny can make a full recovery. Here are the progression photos of Jack getting back to normal. After taking into consideration all of Blueberry's signs and symptoms, we made a trip to our Rabbit Savvy Vet. At the vet, after an initial exam and some tests, they did confirm that she had an ear infection. She was a little mad at us when we first got home, but we told her that she'd be feeling much better very soon. She was such a good bunny and really enjoyed licking up all of her medicine. Look at that little tongue go! To treat Blueberry's ear infection, our vet prescribed her with a pain medicine to help relieve her of any discomfort, an antibiotic to help treat the infection, 
and an ear flush to help clean out any built up wax in her ears. If your bunny is fussy with taking medicine, like Blueberry became a few days into her treatment, it is wise to put them on a raised surface, like a table. This way they cannot run away. I also put her on top of a towel so that she does not slip. Then I insert the syringe into her mouth behind her two front teeth. Slowly push down the syringe and let them swallow the medicine. Make sure to give them a treat afterwards for being such a good bunny. Lop-eared rabbits are prone to ear infections because of how their ear is folded over. It makes it harder for them to clean and does not get as much airflow as a rabbit with ears that stand straight up. To prevent any future ear infections, our vet recommended we give her eardrops once a week to help flush her ears of any built up wax. To administer the eardrops, I shake the bottle, then squeeze one to two drops in each ear. I then massage the base of the ear to help break up any built up wax. She will then shake her head, which removes any built up debris inside of her ear. Repeat the process on both sides. Your rabbit will want to shake their head as soon as the liquid enters their ear, but make sure you massage it a bit first to break up any wax that may be deeper inside their ear canal. After the eardrops, I take a paper towel and wipe up any excess fluid or wax that has exited her ear. However, it is really important to note that you should never stick a Q-tip inside of your rabbit's ear. This could be very dangerous if your rabbit was to move and the Q-tip was to break and get stuck inside of their ear. We have been using these eardrops on a weekly basis since treating her ear infection. Since starting the eardrops, she has not had a repeat ear infection. So far so good, we will continue using them to help prevent any future ear infections. While I have her up on the table, I like to do a weekly ear inspection. I feel around the base of her ear, below the opening, for any swelling or lumps, as this could be a sign of an infection forming. I hope that you found this video informative and that it can help you recognize the signs and symptoms of a rabbit ear infection. Bunnies sure are cute when they clean their face and ears, but if you notice them over grooming accompanied by other symptoms, it may be time for a vet visit. By following the advice of our rabbit savvy vet, Blueberry made a full recovery and is back to her happy and hoppy self. Thank you for watching and we hope to see you next time for more fun and educational rabbit videos.